are dancing has improved, dear boy. <laughs> Tremendously. Oh, yeah. Just a jig that's low. Just a jig that's low. He'll hear you. <laughs> but only with you, Paul. When I dance with you, I feel as though I was dancing on air. <laughs> I have an appointment with my masseur. And he says it's temperamental man. He won't wait five minutes. <laughs> well, goodbye, dear boy. And you have to settle a bill because I must rush. You don't mind. Not at all. And I'll see you next Thursday at two. <laughs> goodbye. You've grown up. Of course. But not very much. Tell me, why did you run away that night? What night? The night of Stubby's dance. You do remember. I danced one dance with you, and then spent the rest of the evening looking at you. And then promptly forgot all about me. Oh, no. I spent all the next day trying to find out the name of the girl in yellow. Did you find her? I was wearing blue. You're not making things very easy for me. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I thought we might take a little ride in the park. You thought... I've got a date back there. With someone you care very much about? Oh, yes, indeed. I'm very fond of her. All women should be kept waiting once in a while. Where's Tamara? Tamara? How should I know? She never tells me where she's going. Why, doesn't she make a confidant of you? Of me? Anything but. What do you mean by that? Nothing, except that Tamara is... No, Tamara. Oh, stop hedging. For all I know, you're shielding her. Her and her gigolo lover. What? Her lover. A low, hired dancing man. You think it's funny, eh? <laughs> well, read that. Oh, a contemptible thing. And you let that upset you. Good heavens, where's your sense? Don't you know that anyone who'd write an anonymous letter is capable of telling all sorts of filthy lies. I'm surprised you even read it through. But Tamara is young and, well, maybe I am an old fool. Tamara is younger than you are, Dad, but she's not a girl. Dad, if she wanted to be unfaithful to you, she certainly wouldn't get mixed up with the sort of person that that letter describes. Why, with her youth and beauty, she wouldn't have to. That's why I laugh. And if you hadn't gone off your head, you'd have seen how funny it is, too. 
Well, perhaps you're right. Uh, don't say anything to Tamara, will you? About this? I should say not. She'd never forgive me. And I wouldn't blame her. But I know how you feel, too. I'd be horribly jealous if I loved a man as much as you love Tamara. Guy, I, I love you too, dear. Of course, I know you do. That's what I think about that. but a vile humor brings him home early, and I'm going out to dinner. Tamara, I promised Dad I wouldn't say anything. But I have a reason for asking you to stay in tonight. Suppose you tell me what it is and stop being so dramatic. He got a letter today. A filthy thing. Anonymous. About you and some man. What? It hinted at... Tam, if there's, if there's any one you've been seeing any more than anyone else, don't do it anymore. You know, Dad. He kicked you out. And he might kill the man. I don't think you need worry about his doing anything drastic. Miss for an anonymous letter? Is there someone else? Suppose I tell you to mind your own business. Ted! Is it a gigolo? Don't you call him that. He's young and he's charming. You've asked for the truth and now you're going to get it. I worship the ground he walks on. I've never been in love before in my life. I'm mad and sane about this boy. And if that old fool in the library causes any trouble, I'll walk out on him with the greatest of pleasure. Tam, you wouldn't. You wouldn't leave this house. Your position. Oh, wouldn't I? I'd starve with him. Then why don't you? Because he refuses to let me make the sacrifice. Or else doesn't care for the responsibility of your support. Perhaps. Think whatever you like. And you may tell John if you care to. I'd die first. That it suit me fine. <laughs> I'm not getting any place. Where did you want to get? Well, I intended to stage a confession scene. Show you a fellow who's done the things he's thoroughly ashamed of. And then ask you to wait and see if he couldn't measure up to your standards. And now you, you've changed your mind? Only about the confession. I, I can't go through with it. Oh, it's nothing to be really ashamed of. It's like a chap who makes his living gambling with friends. You know, something you drift into before you realize it. But, well, anyway, I think I've landed a job in Rio. Rio? Yeah, Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Isn't that in South America? Yes. yes uh, I saw Mason this morning. He's a coffee importer and an old friend of my father's. He thinks he's got an opening in it. It might lead him to something really decent. When do you leave? Right away. Paul, what is it you've done that you're ashamed of? I taught a lot of old fool women and girls to dance. Oh, my dear. Is that all? <laughs> How funny. What sort of a place is Rio? Oh, it's a city. Mm -hmm. Oh, a beautiful city. A lot of people think it's an ideal climate to live in. 
Yeah, beautiful weather. And, oh, lots of scenery. And street cars and coconuts. And do you like coconuts? I love them. They have ripe coconuts. <laughs> oh, they're delicious. And peanuts. Oh, peanuts? No, no. <laughs> no. It's North America. I've already heard from Mason, and I'm to see him tomorrow. Looks like I'm all set. Oh, that's great. Listen, I want to read you something. The many parks are brilliant with tropical flowers. Palms wave their branches 150 feet above the ground. The tall bamboos interlock their feathery arms over the walk, shielding the pedestrians from the sun. We're the pedestrians. Well, bring it along this afternoon, and we'll read it together. And I... When can I get the license? Goodbye. What's the matter? What's your game? My game? Oh, don't hedge. I just heard you on the phone. What did he mean by getting a license? Who? What right have you to listen in to me? All the right in the world, and you know it. Are you trying to get even with me? Or is it some schoolgirl idea of protecting your father? Or have you actually fallen in love with the gigolo yourself? With a... Oh, don't stare at me. Answer me. What do you mean, Tamara? You have made a mistake. Have I? Don't you think I know his voice by now? While he's talking to you and making love to you, I get this. haven't answered me yet. Are you going to marry him? Him? No. I hate him. Come in. Diana isn't coming. Did she tell you? Yes. She hates seeing me. She's decided not to marry you. So she asked me to break the news to you. What have you done, Tamara? Nothing. It was done several days ago. Somebody took it upon himself to send John an anonymous letter about us. She saw it, said several unkind things about my supposed paramour. When she found out it was you, naturally, she was shocked. Well, that's the case. Do you think I care what people say? 
You should. Well, I don't. I'm past caring. Nothing matters to me but you. And if I can't have you, I won't go on living. I'll kill myself, do you hear? Yes, and I hope the neighbors don't. You're laughing at me. You think it amusing to see me bathe? Be so unhappy, so miserable, I, I want to die. The most unamusing thing I can think of. Drink this. Is your car downstairs? No. I came in a taxi. I'll call another one. Wait. Give me a few minutes. I can't go out like this. Were you expecting someone? No, but if you don't wish to be seen, you may go into the bedroom. Why, John, what are you doing here? I came to see what my wife's lover looked like. Your wife's lover? How droll you are. Diana, you mean. Paul, as you must have guessed from the entrance. My husband, Mr. Drexel, John. What are you doing here? It's telling tales out of school, but Diana and Paul quarreled. Diana confided in me. I came up to see if I couldn't patch things up. I don't believe that. There's no deceit in Diana. If she cared for this man, she would have told me, not you. I also give my daughter credit for better sense than decency than to care for a dancing man, a, a gigolo. Is that what you think of him? Your suspicions of me are doubly insulting. What? You mean it? Uh, I, is it true that, you, that it's Diana that you... Mr. Trevor, your daughter is the only woman I really care for. Then why? Why was it kept a secret from me? That was my fault. You called me certain things, eh? may be true, but I wanted to, to prove myself different before I met you. I've been trying. Oh, I don't care what you've been trying. I'm only concerned with my family. I wanted to get my wife and take her away from here before she made me the laughing stock of the town. You don't believe me. Perhaps you'll believe Diana. If she tells you she was engaged to him, will you believe that? Well, I... I might. I'll call her. Paul, where's your telephone? In the bedroom. Uh, just a moment. I'll call her. Pickering, 40828. It's your father, Miss Trevor. Yes, Dad. I don't understand. I'm at his place now. Uh, Tamara said that she came here to patch up a quarrel between you. Is that true? Yes, Dad. Oh, I'm sorry you had to learn about it like this. We'd hope, we wanted to wait until he... No, no, I'm not angry.
I owe you an apology. I won't say that I'm pleased to welcome you in my family, but, well, I'll come to dinner tomorrow night and we'll talk this over. Thank you. And now that you have successfully arranged things, are you ready to go? through dinner, knowing that Dad believes it, and to say the both of you, knowing that... Come in. Mr. Drexel is here. Are you ready? You be down, Diana. I want to talk to John. You're not still angry, are you, Dad? to have dinner up here. Why? Well, after your demonstration yesterday, I think it would be a little embarrassing. You weren't embarrassed yesterday. I suppose it was ridiculous, my being amused. But after thinking it over, I uh, find your suspicions anything but amusing. Very well. Oh, John. I have Henry bring your hot toddy, Dad. <laughs> Meaning that it's time for the old man to go to bed and leave the young people alone, eh? Oh, dear, I'll tell him. Good night, young man. You, uh, you've been a little foolish, but I think you're honest. Oh, uh, have luncheon tomorrow with me at my club. Thanks, I'd like to. Uh, you mean the Union League? You bet. Make it one o'clock. Good night, Diana. And the next time you fall in love, be sure and bring your young man home with you. It might save a lot of trouble. Yes, Dad. You're not going with him. I have to. You're even worse than I thought. To shield yourself, you'd go with him to the one place he really enjoys. Well, I'm not going to have my father's friends laughing at him. You needn't worry. I'll make some excuse. With your aptitude for lying, it shouldn't be hard. Dressed. I'm begging off. I have an appointment in the morning and I won't be able to make it if I stay up late. You run along and make my excuses to Paul. He'll understand. Couldn't you come for just a little while? We'll come home early. No. I know you want to be with him as long as you can, so you run along and uh, give him my best. All right, darling. Good night. Good night, my dear. Good night. Good night.
Thank you. Would you like a little drink? Yes. But I'll join you later. Aren't you going to dance just one dance with me? With you? I'm sorry. But I don't believe I brought any money with me. Uh, I know you two want to be alone, but you must dance with me. <laughs> and you must be jealous. Not at all. find some plausible excuse for breaking the engagement? Several of them. Pity your father missed it. I staged it really for his benefit. I can tell him about it. Try or not. Well, it was a lovely party, wasn't it, Gerald? I wonder where Paul is. Oh, there you are, dear boy. Do you mind holding this for me? Thanks. Uh, ready, girl? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I said, getting late. Is it? You're supposed to be saying goodbye to your lover. Send the car back for me. And is Dad still up? Pay him my compliment and tell him to go to blazes. Where's Tamara? She isn't ready to leave. Well, Diana, let me take you to your car. You need me. You're not playing fair. You know there was nothing between Tamara and myself. And tomorrow I'm going away, thousands of miles away. Oh, don't. No use, Paul. Operator, get me police headquarters.
Hello. Diana. Something terrible has happened. You have to tell your father. What? What is it? What's the trouble? You're not in bed. Obviously. What happened? Oh, dear. Tamara's dead. Tamara? Where? Where is she? In Paul's studio. All right, let's hear what happened. You're Mr. Trevor? Yes. What? Why, she murdered? Then he did it. Yes. Yes, and you helped him. He doesn't know what he's saying. No? Then tell me. Tell me, why did you leave her here alone with him? Why did you, Miss Trevor? She asked me to. Do you know why she stayed after the other guests had gone? No. Well, ask him. Ask why she stayed. I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. I found her here a week ago, with, alone with him. She fooled me, and you helped her. Your lover. <laughs> her lover. Mr. Drexel told me that you were engaged to him. Is that true? Yes. So we quarreled a week ago, and my stepmother came to fix it up. My father had the mistaken idea that they were interested in each other. Did you quarrel again last night, Miss Trevor? I just wondered if your stepmother found it necessary to play peacemaker again. No, we didn't quarrel. Then why did she say? I told you I don't know. You told me that you followed Miss Trevor down to the second floor. How long were you there? I don't know. We talked? What about? He wanted me to... Well, hear from him, if you don't mind. I tried to get her to change her mind and leave with me for Brazil tomorrow. And she refused? Why? Well, I thought it would be better to wait as we first planned. Mm, so you went home alone? Yes. Mr. Drexel wanted to take me, but I thought the chauffeur would be there. What do you mean by that? Wasn't he? No. The car was there, but he was gone. That was about the time. Just a moment. Yes, sir. All right. Come on. Your name Cavendish? Yes, sir. Hmm. That's a funny name for a chauffeur. I'm sorry, sir. It's my own. You drove Mrs. and Miss Trevor here tonight? Yes, sir. Then what did you do? I sat in the car for a while, and then I went to a place down the street. A speak? I don't know, sir. They serve beer. How long were you there? All evening. I expected the party wouldn't break up until late, and I could keep my eye on the car. How? 
Went out and had a look at it every once in a while. I could tell the party wasn't over yet. In other words, you were in and out of the place several times. Yes, sir. You know what's happened here tonight? Yes, sir. The officer told me. You know Mr. Drexel? Yes, sir. How? I've driven him and Mrs. Trevor to cafes and restaurants. Did you ever drive Mrs. Trevor here alone? No, sir. We picked Mr. Drexel up here several times, but Mrs. Trevor never came up. Did Mrs. Trevor go out with other men besides Mr. Drexel? Mrs. Trevor was popular. She lunched and dined with other gentlemen. I don't think there was any harm in it. Do you know of any of these men who might have been an enemy? No, sir. Mr. Romney was in love with her. Romney? Know him? Very well. Was he familiar with this apartment? He was here tonight. How do you know he was in love with her? Well, he painted her portrait and then he wouldn't let her have it. They met quite often. Who else? Then there was Mr. Stanton, the actor. Oh. Oh, tell me. Is it necessary for me to stay here any longer? No. I'm sorry, but we'll have to take Mrs. Trevor's body to the police morgue. You better go with your father, Miss Trevor. We'll have to detain the chauffeur until we check up on his story. What about Mr. Drexel? Mr. Drexel will have to postpone his trip to Brazil. Mr. Randall, Miss Trevor? Yes, yeah, sure am. How do you do, Miss Trevor? Won't you sit down? Well, Miss Trevor, what can I do for you? A great deal, I hope. My attorney tells me that you were at Mrs. Trevor's funeral yesterday. Yes, I was. Are you working with the police? No, I'm not working with anyone. The case interests me. Do you believe Mr. Drexel is innocent? Well, I wouldn't go that far. But when a chain of circumstances seems as tight as the one that surrounds him, I begin to wonder. But he didn't do it. I know he didn't. You know or you believe? Believe. But I want you to prove it. There's a large order. If you talk to Donovan, he's no fool, you know. Why talk to him about it? He arrested Mr. Drexel and he thinks he's, he's guilty. That's why I've got to stop it now. Donovan isn't going to look for another person now. He's going to spend all his time trying to prove Mr. Drexel's guilt. And there's, there's something else that's going to convince him. My stepmother left every cent she had to Mr. Drexel. Everything to Drexel? Yes. It's bad. Does he know it? No, but who's going to believe that he doesn't know it? You've got to help me, Mr. Randall. They tell me that you've solved harder cases than this. I'm willing to spend every cent I have. Will you take the case? I'd rather hear first what you have to go on. Anything that you might know that would throw suspicion away from him. I'm afraid there isn't much. Oh, well, now, we'll decide that. Will you pardon me just a moment? If I should decide to take the case, I'll put one of my men on to work with you. Maybe just as well that he hears what you have to say now. Well, what do you think? I think the guy's headed for the hot seat. Miss Trevor is engaged to Mr. Drexel. Oh, that's too bad. What happened to the anonymous letter your father received? Unfortunately, I, I tore it up. No hope of finding it? The waste paper baskets are empty twice a day, and that was two weeks ago. Did your stepmother keep a diary? Anything that would throw light on her past life? No. I searched her room. She was married twice before, you know. Her first husband was, a, was an actor. She was a dancer. Yes. I think his name was Reynolds. Do you uh, 
But do you happen to know the name of the second husband? No. She was rather strange. She gave the impression of wanting to talk about her past life, even to, to boast about the men who had loved her. But in thinking back, I recall that she never said anything very definite. It's just a sort of vain bragging, and a hint dropped now and again. Why do you suspect the chauffeur? Well, I suppose it sounds rather stupid and vague. But it's the man himself that makes me suspect him. I don't like him. Me either. I'm going to see about him. So wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I haven't agreed to take the case. Better, it's a swell case. Why do you suspect the chauffeur? His alibi is too good for the night of the murder. He's got witnesses to prove that he was three or four hours in one place. You'll find half a dozen people ready to testify that he went out of the joint, stayed a minute, and then came back in. But after he's done this four or five times, who's going to notice if he's been gone 15 minutes the last time? Take it. It's a swell case. <laughs> well, it looks as though we've taken the case. Oh, thank you, Mr. Randall. I love you terribly much, but I'm angry with you. Why? You hired Milton, the attorney, didn't you? Yes. And if he's no good, we'll hire a better one. I can't accept it, Diana. To save your life. Have you read the will? Yes. That's the last trick. Donovan has all the motives he wants. And you're going to sit here and let them convict you? For pride. I've taken enough money from women. That's final. What about the money she left you? I'd go to the chair before I'd touch it. Oh, Paul. What about Mason? He gave you the job. Maybe he'll help you now. He's wealthy. I thought of that, but... Let me go to him and ask you. Mr. Mason? Uh, yes, sir. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I, uh, I have quite a few appointments, Miss Trevor, and I... I'm sure you have. But I won't be long. I suppose, in the first place, well, I'd better tell you that I'm engaged to Mr. Drexel. Oh, you are? Well, will you tell me then why he didn't get in touch with me? When? The day he was to sail. I had to learn from the newspapers that he'd been detained. I arrested him, didn't I? Yes. I suppose you think he's innocent. Absolutely. So do I. But he should have told me. Well, at first he was so shocked. He couldn't think of anything except what had happened to him. And then after those, those awful stories about him, he was certain... My that... dear young lady, a businessman, and I flatter myself I am one, doesn't offer a man a responsible position without looking into his character. And nothing has come out in the newspapers that I didn't know before. He's been a, a silly fool. But I saw no reason why he couldn't pull himself out of the mess. He could have. He can yet. If you believed in him before, will you give him a chance when he's free? Is he going to be free? Yes. He didn't do it. And I'm going to prove that he didn't. That's a big job for a young girl. I suppose you want me to help you. Yes. But only by saying that you'll pay the expenses. He objects to me doing it. And I thought that you might let me tell him that you have enough faith in him to hire a detective and lawyers to clear him. Well, I know it sounds rather far-fetched. But he needs so desperately to be told that someone has faith in him. You have enough faith for a dozen. Thank you. Have you hired a detective? Yes, Mr. Randall. Who? Morton Randall. Do you know him? <laughs> Why, no, but, uh, but... But he's a very good man. Uh, all right. Uh, tell Drexel I'll handle it. Thank you. And be sure and let me know what progress Randall makes. Yes, I will. Thank you again. You've been very kind. Oh, forget it. Henry. Yes, ma'am. Did Cal
haven't you drive Mr. Trevor this morning? No, miss. Do you want him? Well, I want him to do an errand for me later. Oh, if a Mr. Stryker calls, tell him I'm in. Yes, Miss Trevor. Miss Castle to see you, Miss Trevor. Oh, of course. Come in. Thanks. Sit down. You're wondering why I'm here. Miss Trevor, if you don't dismiss the detectives you've hired, you're going to regret it as long as you live. How do you know I've hired them? Oh, that doesn't matter. You've got to stop meddling. Meddling? Do you realize I'm trying to clear Paul? Oh, Paul will be cleared. He's innocent and they can't prove that he did it. But when they trace the crime to the right man, you're going to wish desperately that you'd had nothing to do with it. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Who had the best motive for killing Tamara? Who's Paul's bitterest enemy? And who has money enough to influence the law and have an innocent man executed. Listen, when Romney and I left Paul's the night of the murder, we walked to 8th Avenue before we took a cab. We turned the corner of man's house was turning into 56th Street, going towards Paul's apartment. I saw him, but I didn't think anything of it, except that he might be calling for you and Tamara. It was your father. No. It was your father, and I saw him. Why didn't you say that at the inquest? Why should I help them find the murderer? She deserves to die. That's the second time I've heard you say that. I was at Paul's apartment the afternoon you tried to get him to run away. You were frightened then. But you must be terrified now to come to me with a story like this. You're either afraid for yourself or for someone else. And I think we're getting close. Who told you I'd hire detectives? Let your detectives find that out. Is Mr. Stryker back yet, Mr. Randall? No. Do you have any luck? Yes, we found parts of the anonymous letter. The one Dad got. Where was it? Does the striker have it with him? Yes. But after he'd gone, I happened to remember that, that we hadn't taken a sample of the chauffeur's writing to compare it with. So I went back, and I found the other piece. I'll call you back. Well? Well, I guess I was wrong about the chauffeur. Why? Went through his joint with a fine tooth comb. No luck, eh? Not a doggone thing. Well, we'd we'll follow another lead. You needn't finish those today. We're locking up early. So do you want me to start now? Yes, I'll sign them tomorrow. All right, Mr. Randall. Donovan paid us the honor of a visit today. Yeah? What was on his mind? The usual squawk. Why don't we leave things to the homicide squad? Does he still think Drexel's guilty? 
Yes? Anything else before I leave, Mr. Randall? I don't think so. All right, good night. Good night. Well, what's the next move? I don't know. The Castlewoman called on Miss Trevor today. Yes, what did she want? Wanted her to drop us. Yeah? Pull some story about seeing old man Trevor on the street the night that we... What are you doing? What's the matter? I want that letter. What letter? Give it to me. I'll give you one second. Now get over there. I think I can promise you a solution tonight, Miss Trevor. Tonight? You mean you know who did it? I think so. But there are some things I want to know. First, have you sufficient influence with your bank? Get in touch with someone tonight who can give you your cancelled vouchers? For the last two months. Yes, I have them here. I received my last month's statement today. Good. Good. I want you to bring them, all of them, and the piece of the anonymous letter to Mr. Drexel's studio tonight. Don't go up. Meet me in the foyer at 9 o'clock. And don't speak of this to anyone. I'll be there. Oh, but please tell me more than that. Oh, Donovan is pulling some stunt there tonight. He wanted me to call you up. And I think I have a surprise up my sleeve, and I want to spring it on him. Here. Operator, operator, get me to Central Police Station, quickly. Hello, Central Police Station? Captain Donovan, please. Detective Bureau or, or Homicide Squad, I don't know which he's with.
you down there? Yes, sir. All right, boys. And keep him covered every minute. Drexel, you stick with me. You're sure she's in no danger? No. Donovan's worked up some stunt of gathering all the people together in Drexel's studio. Take out of your bag the papers you brought and put them on the table there. Now go in there. What are you going to do? Do as I say. I don't like this. Cover the hall. Well, aren't you a couple of hours late on that? Yes, but I just realized he might have killed me. Oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Mason's out there. He wants to see you. Mason? Yes. You make him give you the job. All right, darling. It's terrible. I just realized I even suspected my father once. Why was that? Well, he was out when I got home that night. Oh. Well, how did you happen to come to engage Randall? Well, I I heard he was at Tamara's funeral. I thought he must be interested. Now, get me to Central Police Station. And all the time he was... Oh, terrible. How could he have done it? He killed her. And then he went there. Yeah, this is Captain Donovan speaking. Get me Sergeant Farrell. Oh, Sam, Donovan. Yeah? Who? Oh, okay. 
I'll be right down. They just nabbed your chauffeur in Connecticut, trying to make a getaway in your car. Was he implicated? Plenty. He's done time for blackmail, and he was working with Randall. Slipped him information. Has he confessed? No, but he will. And Stryker, one of Randall's operators, was found in Randall's office with his head caved in. Yes? No, he lived, but he's delirious. And he keeps muttering, never tell a woman to keep her mouth shut. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? I wonder if he meant me. 